Happy Sabbath, family. Here are today's announcements and upcoming events. Join us for Mount Calvary Prayer Live, hosted by Dr. Moses Brown, every Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. Join us on Facebook or YouTube at Mount Calvary SDA Tampa. You don't want to miss this. Tampa General Hospital is looking for volunteers to make prayer blankets for ICU patients, and we are answering the call. Our project will kick off today, so if you're interested in being a blessing to others, come to the Fellowship Hall immediately following service. Interested Pathfinders will receive their crochet honor in the process. We have a young lady that learned to crochet when she was a Pathfinder, and she has graciously consented to coach us. Miss Leanna Carr is a student at USF and is the owner and operator of Crochet Royale. Here are the dates for our service project this month. Our goal is to make 25 prayer blankets. Here is your opportunity to be a part of a great community service project. Calling on all educators. Mount Calvary Junior Academy is looking for volunteers, substitute, full, and part-time staff. And if you are a retired teacher and looking to return to the classroom, then please contact Ms. Francine Brown at 813-610-6483. Back by popular demand, Minister Robert L. Hawkins. He will be the guest soloist during Divine Service on Sabbath, March 9, 2024. He will also be in concert in the afternoon at 5 p.m. CDs will be on sale at the pop-up shop in the Fellowship Hall following the concert. Save the date, April 7th, 2024, for a Women's Empowerment Evening Tea. It's a fundraiser. More information to come. It's Sports Day on March 10th, 2024, from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. at Jennings Middle School. Everyone is invited. AY and Young Adult Ministries presents The Hard Truth About Relationships, Part 2. On March 16, following lunch, Greg and Sabina Currenton will focus on communication. Everyone is invited to attend. You don't want to miss it. You are invited to join Women's Ministry Book Club for an exciting and interactive reading of the book Forgiving What You Can't Forget by Lisa Turkers. For more information, contact D. Holton or Katherine Dickens. Attention everyone, there's a senior center opening up here in Tampa. The address is 4520 Seedling Circle, Tampa 33614. The grand opening is Monday, March 4th, 2024 from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Also, Sister Russell would like to meet with all the senior citizens of the church immediately following divine service, right in the front. Housing Counseling Services is back tomorrow, 
March 3rd from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. So if you missed it the first time, come out tomorrow and learn important things about your house. Please refer to the Flock Note Bulletin for all announcements, links, and times. If you'd like to connect with us, please contact us at www.mountcalvarysda.org or visit us on Facebook and continue to watch us on YouTube at Mount Calvary SDA Tampa. And be sure to subscribe to our page. Have a happy Sabbath. Good morning and happy Sabbath. This month, we honor women and highlight their contributions to events in history and contemporary society. This woman of God was born Gloria Lee Sickle in 1942 to Pastor Wilfred and Dorothy Sickle in Battle Creek, Michigan. She spent some of her childhood and high school years in the Battle Creek area of Michigan, working a brief time for the Catalog Company. She is considered the better part of a dynamic duo, is known for her lyrical prowess, and has helped to pen more than 700 gospel songs. Go with me down a musical memory lane to see if you can name some of her greatest gospel hits. Children all over Christendom could be heard singing this song in the 80s. I am a promise. I am a... I am a promise with a capital. You remember that one. Some of you may remember this one. The marketplace is empty. No more traffic in the street. All the builders' tools are silent. No more time to harvest wheat. That's right. The king is coming. What about this one? Shackled by a heavy burden, neath a load of guilt and shame. If you said he touched me, you are correct. Now this next song won many awards and was made famous by Sandy Patty. Upon this rock, yes, other greatest hits were get all excited go tell everybody i believe in a hill called mount calvary i'm so glad i'm a part of the family of god and one of my personal favorites jesus 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 there's just something about that name she has been writing christian songs for over 50 years and she along with her husband has blessed the world with their music creating a lasting legacy in the field of gospel music and beyond as further tribute to her, 
A Hymn of Worship is a song she wrote in 1970 out of great turmoil in the United States amid the Vietnam War and civil rights movement that seemed to be tearing America apart. Gloria was pregnant and wondered why, with such unrest, she would bring a baby into this world. When her baby was born, the first verse she wrote to the song was, How sweet to hold a newborn baby, and feel the pride and joy he gives, but greater still a calm assurance this child can face uncertain days because he lives. Put your big amen voice on and hands together for our honoree, Miss Gloria Gaither. Good morning, church. Please stand and join us as we sing today's hymn, Because He Lives.
Let me say a good morning to each and every one. On behalf of Mount Calvary members, I just want to give you a special welcome. But most of all, to our visitors. And for those who are in the house and those who are online, you are the upper of our highs. And you know upper symbol, love, beauty, and we could name others. But you continue to worship with us. We love you. And I show that visitors in here because we are a loving person. So I'm just going to ask for our visitors to continue to stand and to just show your hands. So since we are standing already. <laughs> Our visitors, please stand. Okay, you're just getting a little token to show you how much we appreciate you coming. And the door is always open, so you're free to come. There's no charge. So whenever you want to come, continue. And we all will stand now and repeat the fourth commandment. Let us stand so we can repeat the fourth commandment. the sabbath day to keep it holy six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work but the seventh day is the sabbath of the lord thy god in it thou shalt not do any work thou nor thy son nor thy daughter nor thy manservant nor thy maidservant nor thy cattle nor thy stranger that is within thy gate for in six days the lord made the heaven and the earth the sixth all their thing and rested on the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Okay, we let us greet somebody now in Jesus' name and tell them that we love them. <laughs>
everyone has greeted someone, let's say hello to Jesus. It's time for prayer. So if you want to stand, if you want to kneel, if you want to come down to the altar, bring your burdens to God. We're just going to ask that you either kneel, you stand. Some of you have come down, just gently touch the other person next to you on their shoulder. As we all present ourselves before God, let's bow our heads to Heavenly Father. Lord, we're thankful that your word said that we can come boldly to your throne. And Father, sometimes we come to your throne timidly. Sometimes we come running, sometimes we come crawling. And sometimes we can't even move, but we know that if we just cry out where we are, you still hear us. So Father, whichever way we've come to you this morning, we first want to say thank you that you even desire to hear our prayer that you desire to hear us speak out to you those things that are happening to us. Father, it's not that you don't know, but you, you love it when we give voice to the things that are troubling us, that we give voice to praises to you and adoration to you. So we come today giving you those things saying thank you first of all for taking such good care of us and then lord we have concerns there are things that some of us have come down this morning and we just want to put before you father struggles whether with ourselves with others with finances with jobs with children with health father maybe even uh, uh, struggles with good desires that we have for ourselves, uh, our, our own purpose and living out the things that you want us to do. Father, we bring them to you. We say, here, take it. Father, for your hands are the best hands to place anything in. Uh, we have no strength of ourselves. We have no wisdom of ourselves except that which you give us. And so now we place it in your hands. We do ask that you help us. Help us, Lord, that when we put our concerns before you and in your hands, that we won't go and take them back out. 
that we won't go and try to handle it all by ourselves but we would have the faith uh, uh, the belief that we would know for a surety that you're gonna handle it and so we give we give the things that we're praying out right now and thinking right now to you and Lord we know the times are getting kind of tough. Uh, uh, some of us are, are, are just sorely, sorely tried. Some of us are going through storms. Some of us are going through some heavy burdens, some heavy trials. Some of us have lost loved ones and are grieving. Father, just like the storm doesn't last forever just like the rain must stop just like winter eventually turns into spring give us the faith and the confidence to know that there's springtime coming in our lives that that this storm will only go through it for for a duration not permanently but but a time has been put on all that we go through. And it's not our time, and it's your timing. So Father, help us to adjust ourselves to your timing and your will. And help us not to fall along the wayside in anxiety and depression and, and hopelessness. Because you, your word, your promises are sure. Uh, every promise you made, every guarantee, every contract, and, 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 and you know, you don't make contracts, you make covenants. There's a difference. There's a difference. Uh, 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 contracts can be broken, but covenants, you guarantee them. And so, Father, everything that you said will happen. So give us the faith to keep holding on. Most of us, give us your spirit to keep us and now Lord we we do ask that you continue with your Holy Spirit to be with us in this service and that you be with your manservant of the hour Ella Robinson give him a double portion of your spirit today give him the words that you want us to hear hide him behind the cross and may the words that are spoken to us today, may each one gather something for ourselves. But we may not just stay here but, and enjoy the service, but may we be changed and also speak words of comfort, of truth to someone else this week. Because you're coming soon. And we not only want to be ready, but we want others to come to heaven with us. So, Lord, we thank you for all these things. In Christ's only name we pray. Amen.
Amen, amen. We can be happy in here today. I know it was dreary and rainy in some of our areas, but you know what? Springtime's coming. That's why the rain is coming. Amen. And, and although we experience the rain, we, we need to experience the rain because it's the rain that makes the crops grow. And we can't have a harvest unless the crops grow. So even when it's raining in our lives, hey, 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 uh, that's not a bad sign. It's a sign that something good is coming later on down. So hold on. And, and I know now it's time for tithe and offering. And I just wanted to read what Romans 1 verse 17 says to us. It says, and I'm reading from uh, the NIV. It says, for in the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed. A righteousness that is by faith from first to last. Just as it is written, the righteous will live by faith. Now I know for some of us, when it comes to our tithe and offering, whoo, that's a faith journey, right? <laughs> oh, yes, yes. <laughs> because sometimes you can take a lot from people when they say and they do stuff but then when somebody touches your money, oh, it's a different ball game. <laughs> but in everything that God has given us, whether it's money, whether it's possessions, whether it's talents, time, and our life, he asks us to be faithful and to walk by faith because he is faithful to us. He is righteous and faithful. And so this Christian journey is a journey by faith. And so giving of tithe and offering is also a faith journey that God wants us to be faithful in. And, and then you're losing nothing by being faithful to him. Amen. Now, now we do have something that will help you be even more faithful. Now, now I do this. I, we have our Adventist Giving. Uh, it's an app where you can go online. And if you have a steady income, you know what your paycheck's gonna be every two weeks or every month. You can do automatic withdrawal where, where Adventist Giving will take out your tithe and offering for you. And it has everything listed from Mount Calvary of where you want your monies to go. So you can just automatically do it and put it in there. And, and you can forget about it. Amen. I do. Amen. I let, I let it get taken off the top. And so if, if, if you want a little bit easier way, convenient way to help you be faithful, we have technology that can help. And so we just, you can go to the Adventist Given uh, uh, app, and then we always have Cash App for those incidentals. You know, those times where you, another convenience of giving. If anything extra for me comes in after I've given through Adventist giving, then I use Cash App so that it's easy, easier for me to be faithful. <laughs> amen. Amen. I don't hear no amen. <laughs> because guess what? God is faithful to you and to me. So we have apps and, and, and online stuff that can help us be even more faithful in that area. I'm going to ask now for our deacons and deaconess to stand up to receive our tithes and offering this morning. And you can give it knowing that God is faithful to you as you're faithful to him. Let's bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, Bless these tithes and offerings that are going to be received on today. Bless the givers. And for those, Father, who desire to give, but don't have at this time to give, Father, provide them the means so that they may be able to give back to you and be faithful and rejoice in spreading this gospel and preparing others and themselves for your coming. We pray in Christ's only name. Amen.
Now, just before we continue our service, we wanted to let our preteens and young adult, up to 19, we are having our young, uh, our youth church, young adult church in the youth room. So if you are a preteen to about 19, 20, there is service for you in behind, directly behind us in the youth room. So I saw a couple um, pre teenagers you have church that's going on and we just want to let you know that that's every first and third sabbath okay and we're just going to continue on now with the rest of our service Good morning, boys and girls. Today's story is entitled, When Dick Ran Away. Dick was upset again. In fact, it seems as if there was always something that he was upset about. And when he was upset, Dick became very nasty and rude. And if anybody tried to correct him, Dick would behave badly. Whenever Dick got in one of these modes, he would threaten to run away. The fact that he was only 10 years old didn't seem to matter to him. Dick felt that he could take care of himself wherever he went. His parents had been good to him, but that didn't matter to him. Dick wanted to run away from home. In fact, that same afternoon, something happened again. Just as Dick was getting ready to go play with his friend across the street, Dad had asked him to mow the lawn. Dick got very angry. Oh, how he hated that. Why did he have to mow the lawn? Dick wished that there was no lawn for him to mow. And later that day, his wishes were crossed again. In fact, several times that day, Dick felt so bad. He became so nasty and angry that the day ended with him getting a good spanking and sent to bed early. But Dick did not go to sleep. No, he didn't. Neither did he say his prayers. He went and he laid in his bed and he made his plan. Today, tonight in fact, was going to be the night when he was going to run for his freedom. He was going somewhere where there was nobody to tell him what to do and nobody to correct him. Where he was going, Dick had no idea. And what he would do when he got there, he had no idea. But one thing he knew, tonight was going to be the night. And so he laid in bed and he waited. And he waited. He waited until the house was quiet. That told him that everybody was asleep. And so Dick got up very quietly, he tiptoed around, he put his clothes on, and then he took his billfold out of the drawer. In it, he had one dollar, a whole dollar. And Dick decided it was time to go. So he tiptoed, as he passed his brother's room, Tiny Tim, Dick realized that he would not see his little brother again. Oh, how he would miss him. Dick had a tear run down his eye, and so he gave Tiny Tim a kiss, a goodbye kiss. Then he passed the room where mom and dad were. He thought about it. He would not see mom again. He wished he could say goodbye to her, but dad, no, he didn't care about dad because dad had made him 
mow the lawn. And while he was mowing the lawn, yes, he did it, but he was grumbling. And so he decided that, you know, I'd better go on. So he went tiptoe down the stairs. As he went down the stairs, he opened the door. And as he closed the door, the door shut behind him. Dick didn't really want that door locked like that, but it had already closed. And so he decided to go on. Dick went outside, and it wasn't what he had expected. It was so dark. The only light was from a street light. It was dark, it was cold, and it was lonely. There was nobody in the streets. Bed seemed like a nice place now. But Dick thought about it. If any of his friends from school had heard about this, they would tease him for the whole year. So Dick decided that he had better go on. He walked on, and as he walked a few steps, an arm came down on his shoulder just behind him. And then he heard a voice. What are you doing out here? Who do you think that was? Who? Jesus? Who do you think it was that asked Dick? Jesus? Who? Huh? Jesus. No, it was the police officer. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. Oh, said Dick. I I'm, I'm sorry. As he looked around. I, I, I made a mistake. I want to go home. Home you'll go, said the officer. But it seems as if you have been up to some mischief. What are you doing here? Uh -uh. Please, uh, let me go. Not until we go down, down to the station, said the officer. And you answer some questions. The station, said Dick. Please, don't take me to the station. But to the station they went. And Dick said that never in his years of schooling had anybody asked him, any teacher asked him so many questions in 10 minutes. When the officer was finished, he took Dick home. And can you imagine how frightened dad was when he heard the knock on the door and opened it and whom should he see but Dick with the police officer. What is happening? said dad. He was so frightened. But Dick just jumped into dad's arms. He was so happy. The police officer gave dad a report of what had happened. And then dad and Dick went upstairs to talk to mom. Next morning, Dick woke up. And guess what? Mom had made Dick's favorite breakfast. There was waffles and pancakes, pancakes, syrup, egg and sausage. Because she said, oh, and there's lots of it too. Because she said that her prodigal son had returned home. And Dick said, never again, never would he ever think of running away. Now, what lesson do you think Dick learned from this? Any idea of the lesson Dick learned? Or do you think Dick learned any lesson? Do you think Dick learned any lesson? Nobody? Yes? That he shouldn't run away? Yes. Any other lesson Dick learned? Do not run away from your parents? Yes? I think so. All right, so those are two lessons Dick run, taught, learned. Never to run away from home because they say the grass looks greener on the other side. just looks. It's not necessarily greener. Who would like to pray for us? Who would like to pray? Come. Let us close our eyes. Yes, Just Let us pray. Um, dear Jesus, um, help, um, help us to enjoy lunch and help, and, and help us to thank the Lord for our sins. In, in Jesus' name, and I pray, Amen.
Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. Mm -hmm. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. I lift my hands in total adoration unto you. You
Happy Sabbath, everyone. Let me, just, let me see a show of hand if Jesus is the center of your joy. Amen. It should be all of us. Jesus, you're the center of my joy. All that's good and perfect comes from you. You're the heart of my contentment, hope for all I do. Jesus, you're the center of my joy. When I've lost my direction, you're the compass for my way. You're the fire and light when nights are dark and cold. In sadness, you are the laughter that shatters all my fears. When I'm all alone, your hand is there to hold. Oh, oh, oh. Jesus, you're the center of my joy. good and perfect comes from you. You're the heart of my contentment, hope for all I do. Jesus, you're the center of my joy. You are why I find pleasure in the simple things in life. You're the music in the meadows and the streams. The voices of the children, my family and my home. You're the source and finish of my highest dreams. Oh, 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 Jesus, you're the center of my joy. And all that's good and perfect comes from you. Of my contentment, hope for all I do. Jesus, you are the center of my joy. Jesus, you are the center. You 
Good afternoon. Indeed, God is the center of my joy. I will do anything for him. As the praise theme song, my heart is rejoicing because God is too good to me. I've been through many situations been just removed from Black History Month. I must say something. If I don't say something, it wouldn't be me. Because we were stolen from Africa we were brought to the Americas we're fighting and still fighting but God knows as the word came to his servant Amos Amos declared I am not a prophet in Amos 7 verse 1 he said I am not a prophet or the son of a prophet he says that he is a sheep breather or a sheep herder and he also says that he, he cultivates sycamore fruits. For those who do not know, sycamore is fig. That's what Amos says. But the word of the Lord came to him. I must declare to you that even though my father's name is Amos, I'm still not a son of a prophet. So as I come standing here this afternoon, it is my prayer, my hope, my dream, my aspiration that we'll find in this season of the unknown a comforting presence of God. Let us pray. Almighty God and Father, these are your people. These are your words. I am only your humble servant. So even now, 
my father, use me until I'm completely being used to bring a word from on high for such a time like this. Bless us now in Jesus' name. Our coming here today, we have been challenged. We are confronted with issues that are relevant for our time. Earth, our planet, feeling the pangs of difficulties. Life have many twists and turns. As we negotiate these uncertain times, I de declare to you that we must have someone or something to hold on to. So I present to us Jesus. For such a time like this, hopelessness and despair are seen everywhere. So here I am speaking on the issue journey into the unknown. All of us, without exception, all of us go through life. There are seasons in life as we have the four seasons of the year. We have seasons. And during these seasons of unknown, there is a tendency for us to abandon our faith because we are always looking for the physical. Things that we can see. Things that we can hold on to. But in these uncertain times, I declare to us, we need more than that. So our memory text we have an example in the form of Joseph. I must share with us this afternoon that he's one of my favorite Bible character, Joseph. His life for the most part, live in the unknown, the uncertainty of what will happen tomorrow. His life live for the moment. So our memory text came to us at the very end of his life. Genesis, the book of beginning. Genesis 50, 
24 to 26. Joseph predicting at his death. The scripture says, And Joseph said to his brethren, I am dying, but God will surely visit you and bring you out of this land to the land which he swore to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. Then Joseph took a note from the children of Israel saying, God will surely visit, it, visit you. And he made one request of them. He said, carry my bones from here. What a strange request for a dying patriarch. But he knew what many of us should at some time and at some point in our life come to that place. When journeying to that unknown, as we live our lives in this two end point, the beginning and the end point of life, and that continuum those between that two point, life live. I declare to us this afternoon that we do not know. We planned, we strategize, we do everything humanly possible to have an outcome that we can kill it that will be to our best good. But because life comes at us in so many waves of uncertainty, we cannot always come to that place where we know it. We are to know as we are confronted With these issues, life lived in the presence of God. Life lived in the spirit of obedience to God is a life well lived. Let us dream. Let us have aspiration. Let us set goals that we want to be God's people, God's son, God's daughter. In spite of what the world are selling, we know it won't be long. The signs are everywhere. Can't you see them? The blind are seeing that the signs are nearer home than we believe. I remember 30 something years ago when I came to this country. You know, I'm going to disclose to a surprise many. I came here with the idea 
that I was going into the Kalpoja ministry, selling books. That's what in the 80s, when I grew up in Jamaica, our dreams was to scatter the printed pages of E.G. White to every Christian Caribbean. So students who were at Northern Caribbean who could not afford a tuition, their way to college is selling books. It was a noble profession, a dying one now. Very few people are in calportering, but I still saw a person doing calportering in Jamaica. It is still, you know, so we grew up, love reading. It's a lost art among our generation, the younger generation, I would, should say. Reading is not attractive as before. Gazing on the, 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 the device. That's what we, they do all day long, all the time. They got to be a balance, though. They got to be a balance. Do some reading. Do some other stuff beside on you. There's nothing wrong. I'm not saying something wrong with that. But I'm saying you should diversify your, your appetite for knowledge. Because the pen of inspiration said, In the time of trouble, only that which you have put in through, through, through reading, God will use. And for those who will be called upon to defend their faith, Christ tells us that we should not worry about what we are going to say because he will Bring back to our memory that which we have put in his word. So I'm imploring all of us, find some quality time to read. Truth. Reading gives you a broader perspective of life. A broader view of the world we live in. Because there are too many people believe that we live in isolation. We are a global community. What affects you here affects others elsewhere. We don't live in these little vacuum that people are, are telling us. We live in a community. We are humans. So we are from the human species. Homo sapien. Yes, sir. Many people don't believe that we all have one common good. But we are. We may look different. We may come from different parts of the earth. But we are humans. We want to be loved. And we want to give love. We want to enjoy life. Not always fighting for scraps of others. You know, that 1% that controls 95% of the world's economy, that's not God ideal. That's never been God ideal. God, you know, when we look into God, He's looking out for everyone. 
not for some. And I believe that is still the issue that are relevant in our time. We cannot always look for ourselves because the truth is most of the time when we look for others, that's when God takes care of us. I know. So there are difficulties that the church face dealing with the unknown. We came back from the pandemic. A different worshiping people. Some still are home. I'm not I'm not going to judge no one. I'm not telling you what you are to do. But somehow the scripture before time said, there are among us those who want to stay away from us as the manner, the habit. But do not forsake the assembling of yourself. There is blessing to be had. Iron Sharpnet iron. When we hear the story of Jesus doing in individual lives, I'm talking about journey into the unknown. You listen to God working in someone else's life. You understand that your journey must have meaning. And there is a reason for your journey. Joseph could not see at all why his brothers sold him into slavery. I'm talking about the unknown. There was no reason for that hard and Difficult life. Even after he went into Egypt. Being accused. Thrown into prison. For something he didn't even do. He ran for his life. You know I will admonish some of our men. That sometimes when you are trapped, you should run. Joseph set a good example that you are not coward. You are wise when you run sometimes. You must run. I just throw that in for the men. <laughs> you know, for... We are living in a world. Somebody trying to control somebody. And so you have to run. So my challenge will be few. I'm coming to a close now. In spite of the joblessness, the hopelessness, our country is in the abyss of hopelessness. November, everybody is talking about November, the unknown. It's, it's the unknown. It's unknown. However, 
I'm going to bring some clarity in the marketplace where ideas are sell and bought. Jesus speaking through his servant David in the, the beloved Psalms, the 23rd Psalms, the Lord is. The Lord is. A present tense. And it's also a present continuous tense. The Lord is. It simply means that at no time God is not. The Lord is. So you may be going through the crucible of the unknown. But you must be reminded that the Lord is. And that, if you look in the original context, it, it is giving the idea that the very presence of God in those moments where, where, where you cannot see it. You can't even trace his hands. You just have to trust the word of God. We were encouraged in our Sabbath school lesson some weeks ago that Christ Whenever time he's been tempted by the enemy, he would always refer to the word. It is written. So, when we are in this journey of unknown, we have to follow our example, Christ. Let this scripture be our comfort. Let the word of God be our guide. I do believe our church, I am not going to apologize at all that the Seventh-day Adventist church is God's church. And it is the vehicle through which God is going to use to finish the work in this our time. I'm not sure if I will be around. But I am doing all I can while I can like Joseph, who would have given the word, bring my bones with you when you leave Egypt, 400 years apart. His faith was ironclad in God. And the word that God promised that he'll bring his children to the promised land. I do believe Saints of God, I believe that God is coming. There is no doubt in my mind that it is just around the corner. Look around you. Look around. Lawlessness, immorality, 
everybody doing everything. Some say it's just a part of it. I want to believe that the psalmist in Psalms 137 verse 1 when, when they were in Babylon captivity the enemy required them to sing the songs of Zion. He said sing us the song of Zion out of mockery. They said how can we sing God's song in a, a strange land? They said they hung up their harp and they refused to play because it was a time for them to retrospectively look back what have caused their, 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 their struggle. It wasn't the time for jovial music because they were in exile. We could learn from that. Holy Spirit, faithful guide, ever near the Christian side, hold us by the hand and lead us. Courage, brother, do not stumble. Though the part be dark as night, trust in God and do the right. Sweet promise is given to all who believe. Behold, I come quickly, mine own to receive. Hold fast till I come. The danger is great. Sleep not as do others. Be watchful and wait. I believe that God in his own time as he deal with the, 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 the challenge that we face, we must come to that point wherein we will trust that God, John, the, um, the Apostle John, writing The heart of God. He said, I am the bread of life. Talking about one of those tents that God is. Then I move to I am. John 6, 35, he said, I am the bread of life. John 8, 12, I am the light of the world. John 10, 7, I am the door of the sheep. John eleven twenty five. I am the resurrection and the life. John 15, 1, I am the true vine. Finally, in the book of Revelation, he declared, I am the Alpha and the Omega. The beginning and the end. 
So as we embrace the love of God in this, our season of unknown, may you take comfort in the redeeming grace that saves us. We are reconnecting to the power that is bigger than each one. I don't know. I've always believed that God have a plan for each one. In Exodus 13, I think Moses in 19 and 22, Moses took the bones of Joseph when he crossed over to the promised land. Because Joseph believed even in death that God is the unknown period of his life. So I'm suggesting to each one of us, when you come to that junction, that time in your life, the unknown, That is where God thrives. That is Zion, where God lives. Because in Numbers 13, God, 22, 13, 22, it says that he took not away the pillar of cloud by day, nor the pillar of fire from before them. So God, in front of them and behind them, what a promise. If we can catch a, a vision when we are in that valley, the shadow, darkness seems to around us and close us. Remember this. God is nearer than you think. As the, the team for us Seventh day Adventists in Matthew 28, my last text. 18 to 20, we say, go and make disciples of all nations. Baptizing them. Teaching them to observe all things. But he says, Lord, I am with you always. Another one that God is present with us in whatever moment of struggle that we go through. It is my desire 
I hope somebody will join with me today. And here in this opportunity, we want to be where he is. I'm going to open the door of this church. I'm going to extend to anyone. You do not know what is going on in your life. But I give you Jesus. You want to say to God this afternoon, Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I'm in that space. I'm in th on that journey, the unknown. But I know you know God. The ends of this journey. So come into my heart. The, to the story is told of a man who had three sons. He was on his dying bed. And he called for his three sons. They come from different places in the country. They gather around his bedside. And he says to two of his sons, Sons, see you in the morning. And then to another, he said, Goodbye. The son that he said goodbye to was a bit perplexed. And he said, Daddy, Daddy, why did you say to my brothers, see you in the morning, and to me you say goodbye? The old man said, Son, your two brothers I give their heart to Jesus. But you have not. I know I'm going by the way of the fathers. But I'll see them again. That's why I say I see you in the morning. The young man break out in tears. And he said, Daddy, Daddy, I want to see you in the morning too. He gave his life to Jesus that moment. So I'm saying to somebody, this may, may be your opportunity to give God a chance. Full change to your life. So that in the morning and that great getting up morning we'll see Jesus without will you will I someone will enter the pearly gate will you God is calling If not, let us stand.
as I ask God's presence and his worship. Eternal God and Father, I have delivered that which you have given to me, to your people. In this, their journey into the unknown. Father, I pray that they may embrace your presence. I am. You said you are the good shepherd. And yes, you are. You are the light of the world. Yes, you are. So even now, I pray that you may bless each worshiper here at Mount Calvary. Bless those who are online, those of families and friends back home in Jamaica. Be with them. Be with all of us as we worship this Sabbath. May the blessings that we come seeking, may we go rejoicing we have heard and we have comforted we have con been confronted we have been challenged and now we have been delivered thank you Lord for hearing and answering our prayers in Jesus name I pray Amen thank you be seated Let's say amen again. If you're watching online, I don't want you to click away just yet. I have some important announcements. The first two, please pay attention to these first two. You could need it or someone you know could need it. Um, our first announcement is that uh, these two are in, in um, uh, we're talking about housing here. So first, first, um, it was brought to my attention that uh, Section 8 is taking applications from March the 1st to the 22nd. You know that we have a housing crisis in this area. You know that, right? Okay, so if you have someone you know that is still trying to find housing, affordable housing, uh, Section 8 is taking applications between March uh, from the 1st to the 22nd. The 22nd, it closes. You can check with the Tampa Housing Authority um, or go online to apply. I think it's quicker if you go online to apply. So just know that anyone, anyone you know that needs that information, pass it along to them. The second one, for those of us who are Florida homeowners, we are having another housing counseling session this Sunday from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. Amen. It doesn't matter if you're behind in your mortgage. It doesn't matter if you're, you're still doing good or if you foresee problems that are coming down. Um, whichever way it, it is with you, it doesn't matter. This is very important information because they're going to teach you how to preserve your home and not lose it. Amen. Uh, not only that, for those of us who are Florida homeowners that attend um, and you stay for the full session, full attendance, you will get a $50 gift card. Hallelujah. So uh, I was at the first one. This is the second one we're having. And I want to say that the $50 gift card is legit. Amen. Glory. Hallelujah. I, I done use mine, folks. Um, so... So the forms are in the lobby, and you may register tomorrow if you can't go online and register tonight, but it will be good if you pre-register. There's just a couple questions. And um, once again, 
from, it's tomorrow in the fellowship hall from 10 to 12 p.m. If you've been to the last one, find someone else to come out. Um, this is not just for Mount Calvary. This can be anybody, your neighbor, your coworker, and your, your family members, whomever you know, spread it across. That we don't know if we'll be able to host this again. And not only when the grant monies run out, it runs out. And we may not be able to provide it to you again. So let's jump on this opportunity tomorrow. Um, also, uh, seniors, you have a meeting uh, immediately after service in the back over by Sister Russell. And put, wait, put your hand up. Uh, Sister Russell, are you there? Okay. I, I can't really see Sister Cartwright. Um, but it's usually in this corner right here. Um, and then today for AYS, we are working on a service project. We are crocheting blankets for those who are sick or in hospice. Um, so if you're not able to attend today and you still want to be involved in that as we do more community projects, please do reach out to Sherry McDonald. Um, but if you can stay behind today, please do stay behind. We're going to go ahead and um, start that project today. And then last but not least, um, we want to let you know that um, the memorial service for S Sister Jacqueline Alexis will be March the 10th at 12 noon when we get more um, details of where it's going to uh, be at and, and the viewing and everything, we will let you know. She was a former member of Mount Calvary. Um, so those of you who know her, you know, we will pass on the information as it is given to us. So continue to play, pray for the Alexis family, the children, the grandchildren. At this time, we can stand as we're going to get ready to pray. And also keep the rest of our families who are grieving in prayer. There's several families, several families, Claybrooks, uh, Porter, you know, different families among us that are still grieving. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, uh, Lord, we have been reminded today to have faith in you even when the going gets tough uh, a father that 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 we should have the faith of joseph that he knew the children of israel were gonna leave out of egypt one day and told him to take his bones uh, uh, but father even for those of us who who die in christ and never get to see you come that second time live through th that those days father uh, uh, we won't have to carry any bones uh, those bones are going to be resurrected and new bodies will be given to us so father even as we continue to ruminate on the words that were given today remind us that that day is coming that that you're coming again to receive your own and take us to heaven so help us to walk in faith and hope and be encouraged even if no one else around us is encouraged that we should be like David and encourage ourselves in the Lord so father we thank you for this bless us now as we go out uh, not from your presence but keep us during this week we pray in Christ's only name amen you may be seated
Happy Sabbath, family. Here are today's announcements and upcoming events. Join us for Mount Calvary Prayer Live, hosted by Dr. Moses Brown, every Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. Join us on Facebook or YouTube at Mount Calvary SDA Tampa. You don't want to miss this. Tampa General Hospital is looking for volunteers to make prayer blankets for ICU patients, and we are answering the call. Our project will kick off today, so if you're interested in being a blessing to others, come to the Fellowship Hall immediately following service. Interested Pathfinders will receive their crochet honor in the process. We have a young lady that learned to crochet when she was a Pathfinder, and she has graciously consented to coach us. Miss Leanna Carr is a student at USF and is the owner and operator of Crochet Royale. Here are the dates for our service project this month. Our goal is to make 25 prayer blankets. Here is your opportunity to be a part of a great community service project. Calling on all educators. Mount Calvary Junior Academy is looking for volunteers, substitute, full, and part-time staff. And if you are a retired teacher and looking to return to the classroom, then please contact Ms. Francine Brown at 813-610-6483. Back by popular demand, Minister Robert L. Hawkins. He will be the guest soloist during Divine Service on Sabbath, March 9, 2024. He will also be in concert in the afternoon at 5 p.m. CDs will be on sale at the pop-up shop in the Fellowship Hall following the concert. Save the date, April 7th, 2024, for a Women's Empowerment Evening Tea. It's a fundraiser. More information to come. It's Sports Day on March 10th, 2024, from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. at Jennings Middle School. Everyone is invited. AY and Young Adult Ministries presents The Hard Truth About Relationships, Part 2. On March 16, following lunch, Greg and Sabina Currenton will focus on communication. Everyone is invited to attend. You don't want to miss it. You are invited to join Women's Ministry Book Club for an exciting and interactive reading of the book Forgiving What You Can't Forget by Lisa Turkers. For more information, contact D. Holton or Katherine Dickens. Attention everyone, there's a senior center opening up here in Tampa. The address is 4520 Seedling Circle, Tampa 33614. The grand opening is Monday, March 4th, 2024, from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Also, Sister Russell would like to meet with all the senior citizens of the church immediately following divine service, right in the front. Housing Counseling Services is back tomorrow, March 3rd, 
from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. So if you missed it the first time, come out tomorrow and learn important things about your house. Please refer to the Flock Note Bulletin for all announcements, links, and times. If you'd like to connect with us, please contact us at www.mountcalvarysda.org or visit us on Facebook and continue to watch us on YouTube at Mount Calvary SDA Tampa. And be sure to subscribe to our page. Have a happy Sabbath.